Am I audible? Hello? Yes, you are. You are audible. Can I only share the screen, please? Yes, you can, sir. You are co-host. So what we do is, I mean, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, and I'll be talking about the holistic and psychological perspective. And what is IBS? I think which has already been discussed and talked about a number of times uh, with the previous speakers. Uh, it is a functional disorder of the lower gastrointestinal standard tract, characterized by abdominal discomfort and alteration of bowel habits in the absence of any organic disorder. It is a disorder of the gut-brain axis and has no organic cause. It's certainly suggesting the prevalence of IBS in the Indian population are not very conclusive, although it suggests prevalence rate are about 4 to 5 percent in North Indian community. Signing symptoms, as you can already see in the picture also, it's the abdominal pain or discomfort, frequent diarrhea or constipation, change in bowel habit, urgency for bowel movement, feeling of incomplete evacuation, and that's what we uh, have a typical thing of telephone, bloating or abdominal distension. People with IBS, more commonly than others, have gastroesophageal reflux symptoms related genital urinary system, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, headaches, backache, and psychiatric symptoms such as depression and anxiety are very common. And the most important is in males, there's reduction in libido also. As such, exact cause of the IBS are still unknown, but recent evidence indicates that there are abnormal levels of mast cell expression and activation in specific part of the gastric spinal tract, which are unique to each subtype of IBS. Risk of developing IBS increases six-fold after acute gastric spinal infection, which was again discussed earlier by uh, the previous speaker. Further risk factors are young age, prolonged fever, anxiety, and depression. Antibiotic use appears to increase the risk of developing IBS. Research has found that genetic defects in immune immunity and epithelial homeostasis increase the risk of developing both post infectious as well as other forms of IBS. Certain personality characteristics like getting easy and stuff, excessive Concern about one's physical health, low stress, poor coping ability have been found to be present in people with IBS. This has been a study which was there. Anxiety, sensitivity, that is the tendency to believe that anxiety and its symptoms are harmful to the body or mental state has been suggested as a possible cognitive mechanism of abdominal symptoms and anxiety in people with IBS. Stress has been found to play a major role in IBS as it can lead to the worsening of the symptoms, particularly the vomiting, diarrhea, and constipation. Studies suggest that for 25 to 30% of chronic IBS patients who would be considered moderate to severe Psychological treatments may be the best alternative and certainly have a role to play in comprehensive care of the IBS patient. As far as the investigations are concerned, you can do tests, and you can get a complete hemogram, liver function test, abdominal ultrasound, endoscopy, and pulmonoscopy. And in certain cases, I mean, people go in for some. Uh, scanning also. What one can do to prevent and what are the preventive measures? First of all, the patient must be advised to go in for low carbohydrate diet. Proton pump inhibitors used to suppress the stomach acid production 
which may cause bacterial overgrowth leading to irritable bowel syndrome symptoms and thus should be discontinued. Avoid stress of any kind, drink plenty of water and exercise in the form of yoga is a, of great help. Coming to the my forte, which is homeopathy. And homeopathy is the answer to irritable bowel syndrome. For long, scientists have been trying to ascertain the exact reason for the bowel to suddenly start behaving indifferently in a man. When other causes are ruled out, then the person labeled as an IVF patient with no apparent cause. And this is the I mean, a, a situation in present day also. When no proper cause could be found, the scientists attributed IPS to being a psychosomatic disorder, which means a disorder which is resultant of stress, anxiety, and depression. And that is why we see a much, much more number of cases of IBS because of these uh, underlying prevalent factors. It is hence believed in modern medicine there is no permanent cure for this condition as per to the modern medicine. But as we have talked about homeopathy and Ayurveda, we have been seeing the cases of IBS after long complete treatment with, with holistic approach, they completely get closed. There's not one or two number of cases have been there which we have seen in our clinic. But homeopathy, on the other hand, has a great deal to offer in IBS or any kind of somatic, uh, psychosomatic disorder. As the basic principle of homeopathy a system of medicine is that the medicine is prescribed on the basis of the patient's constitution. It means a homeopathic doctor takes into account not just only the physical symptomatology that the patient is giving, but also the entire mental framework of him. That is what we say the uh, constitution means uh, his mental, physical, emotional, environmental, I mean, uh, reaction, and which differs from individual to individual. And that is what is more important from homeopathy is the individualization of the case. Like even if four patients of IBS are there, it is not necessary that all the four patients will be treated by the same medicine. Whereas, uh, incidentally, in modern medicine, it would remain the same because they have been treating the disease as per symptoms, but we have been treating the disease as per the constitution of the patient, of the general. And I'm sure even the Ayurveda also believes in that. As in how is the mental step, his, his decision making, any fear complex, his basic temperament, etc. When the patient is treated as a whole like this, then the chances of patient getting some completely becomes extremely high because when the patient is being treated for his constitution, then the I mean, possibility of getting cured is much, much more rather than his treating symptoms on the physical basis only. A correct homeopathic medicine when given, taking all the above mentioned factors, then the immune system of the individual becomes so strong it boosts off the disease completely and it, it is able to take care of the tendency uh, which a patient which a person has been having for quite some time or even the family those who have been um, undergoing such kind of a uh, problem repeatedly if they have been treated in a proper homeopathic manner they have been able to get out of this uh, tendency and they become completely cured similarly in yes, not all the patients act the same way, so it is that in treating a group of uh, irritable bone drum cases would be the medicine selected would depend entirely on the constitution of those cases, which is I think is the USP of homeopathy because individualization is the one thing which gives the specific tailor-made treatment for that particular patient only. 
there are many medicines which work very well on the psychosomatic axis of the body. I mean, uh, just a couple of medicines are argentum nitrosum, arsenic album, carcinocin, gelsemium, sulfur, nux vomica. These are the medicine which has been found very, very effective, but this does not mean a patient of uh, IBS has seen this medicine working better and starts taking on their own. It is, there is, there is, there is a definitely, I mean, a rider or I mean, a, a caution that patients should not take any medicine on their own. Such medication without the consultation of a, I mean, a uh, consultant is not advisable. Though it may not do any adverse harm as per of modern medicine, but certainly it may not be able to give you the proper desirable result. And if the desirable result is not being obtained by that medicine, so people may think that homeopathy is not work. It is not the homeopathy, it was the wrong choice of medicine which was taken by the individual or without taking the constitution into account in medicine as it taken. It might give you a partial relief, but then the problem may recur. And to get completely, it is always better to take the I mean, typical constitutional individualistic approach treatment by, by a proper community doctor. Stress is usually manifested in the form of fight or flight, which is done by the nervous system of the human being. In a stressful environment, the sense cranial nerve called the vagus in alliance with the autonomic nervous system manifests in a patient in the form of fear, anxiety, palpitation, sudden constipation or diarrhea, vomiting, excessive fitting or trembling. So much so you, are, you must have come across a number of patients in your I mean, uh, clinic that a patient who has been sitting absolutely fine, there has been no problem, and suddenly he gets a news, a uh, bad news or a uh, shocking news, and suddenly he rushes to the toilet and from nowhere the stool comes. So from where the stool comes is the I mean uh, typical uh, vagus nervous system which triggers this kind of a and such kind of a I mean symptomatology homeopathy has been very, very effective in treating uh, such kind of a patient. With the homeopathic medicine, this balance is tried to regain. Once this homeostasis is achieved, the patient gets rid of all these complaints and is completely cured. Now, psychological intervention is a very, very integral part of uh, IBS. Uh, psychoeducation, educating the patient about the condition, its probable cause. Role of the psychological factors in the causation, maintenance, ideas. Psychotherapy is like cognitive behavior, hypnotherapy has been found to be effective in the treatment of irritable ball syndrome. The treatment plan. Is utilized for each person depending on the nature of the problem and his uh, overall personality dynamic. The stress management leave a uh, learning effective way of managing daily stress will improve the overall adjustment to functioning as well as relaxation training is one such way. Regular exercise, healthy diet, and a structured daily routine is uh, advisable. To eat is human, to digest is divine. That's what has been said by Copland. And thank you very much for giving me patient hearing and an opportunity to speak about my homeopathic and psychological aspect perspective on treating the irritable bowel syndrome cases. Thank you thank very you, much. Sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. May Bhati Apka Dhanavada Dakartahu. आपने बड़े सरल शब्दों में और होम्योपैथी की महत्ता के बारे में 
बताया तो आशा करता हूं कि लोग इससे लाभान्वित होंगे मैं अब आई के एक्सपीरियंसेस के लिए संक्षिप्त में आमंत्रित करता हूं आलोक शर्मा जी को प्रणाम प्रणाम धन्यवाद धन्यवाद मेरा बहुत सारा पार्ट जो थियोरिटिकल था ऑलरेडी होमोपैथी आयुर्वेद में डिस्क्राइब हो चुका जी है जी केवल संक्षिप्त हाँ। में प्रैक्टिकल एक्सपीरियंस है सर देखिए मेरे हिसाब से अगर हम आई के हिंदी करेंगे तो हम बड़ा कंफ्यूज रहेंगे ये व्याधि तो नहीं है लक्षण पुंज दो पर मतलब दूस, दूसरा ज्ञान मुझे मिला होम्योपैथी से जैसे हम जाते छोटी छोटी पिल्स होती है लेकिन दो सेंटेंसेस उनके होम्योपैथी के टोटल सबमिशन पर आ गए सामने एक तो उन्होंने लिखा मैंने उसको कोट भी कर लिया है अलग से कि होम्योपैथी इज द आंसर टू आई बी एस आई जस्ट नोटेड डाउन मतलब ये है हमारी पैथी का कॉन्फिडेंस और इसीलिए हम ए वाई यू एस और एच हैं हम एच इसीलिए हैं कि अगर हमें सारे को छोड़ के अपने विभाग के एच में जाना पड़े तो हमें कोई गुरेज नहीं होना चाहिए क्योंकि हमें मरीज के स्वास्थ्य के लिए काम करना है और दूसरी चीज उन्होंने जो सबमिट करने के लिए बताई वो इतनी बढ़िया बताई टू ईट इज ह्यूमन बट टू डाइजेस्ट इज डिवाइन मतलब इसके आगे बचता क्या है इतनी बड़ी बात उन्होंने कह दी कि हम अपने बेतु के मैंने इनडिस्क्रिमिनेटली कुछ भी खाते रहे लेकिन हम पचा पाएंगे नहीं पचा पाएंगे ये हमारी वैश्य हमारे जो अग्नि देवता है जो हमारी अग्नि अग्निमानता या अग्नि की समता है उस पर निर्भर करता है और उसी को आगे बढ़ाया डॉक्टर आलोक शर्मा जी ने बड़े शाह से तो कहा कि हम एलोपैथी के बीच में बैठ के काम कर रहे हैं मरीज हमारे पास तभी आता है जो ट्रीटेड होता है 